if the if we do a lot of performances we have students and all dancers get together and have festivals then we will probably have lots of uh, if people start coming now because people are not worried about going out in the night they will come to the theater so if with the more performances we have more sponsorship we will have and I, I i feel that in the future that is what we have to do and also work with other artists and uh, as dancers we have never had any uh, any ethnicity we all have worked i have worked with the uh, carnatic singers of this country the tamil artists have worked with us we have done a lot of work together and uh, we respect their art and they respect our art so basically and what you are saying is in art the like uh, things there is like no difference. ethnicity and all that no, gets there is lost no difference. how can you when can you are a good artist you appreciate good art so you if you if you they 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 understand their own art they will appreciate what we are doing even if they don't understand our our dance they still appreciate they have seen and they uh, my my father has had a lot of support from the tamil community from the very beginning her his greatest admirers have always been tamil artists and uh, we have traveled to jaffna many a times before but i would really love to take a very traditional uh, program to jaffna and perform there and let, g bring artists of that uh, part to sri lanka and you know that's the only way we can go forward mixing up and getting doing productions together uh, you know working uh, with good artists and for that the most important thing is to know that the first thing we have to do is learn your own technique properly you know your own culture well and not always try to follow the west or do, just follow what they see first of all we our own technique is so rich and in our school we welcome any any student who really want to come and learn uh, the traditional dance properly so, so now you also referred a couple of times uh, for about the need for all the artists to work together mm. that is especially you were referring to dancers so has it happened in sri lanka where all dancers and dance schools work together where the synergies come together they work for a sort of a common goal has it happened or yes in the past my my, my father when he had the school in kolpiti all the artists lived together uh, amardeva uh, samar uh, ananda samarkon um sunil shant all singers musicians dancers they all lived together and did big productions and that's how big creations like karadi and alalamanti came to be because they all lived together and worked together but now each one has their own company and they are trying to uh, you know do their own thing the the reason i i do, i really don't know why what the reason is that we have not been able to work together to make big productions so you think that this is also need of now we just spoke about sort of a possible cultural renaissance yeah. and i think your message was uh, first of all learn your technique understand your history where dance comes from and where if you have good students you will have more productions if you have more produ productions more people will come to the theater especially that a voice over mm. and when there are more people coming into the theaters there will be more sponsorships as well yeah. so it seems and like also, it's a cycle uh, and and also will students will start to think that Uh, you can be a, a professional dancer in this country dancer or singer or you know because i i find that most of the people most parents always want their children to be a doctor or engineer i think it's still happening when they want to dance or they want to sing there are objections from uh, you know parents but i i think that this is the time now to show that we we can be good artists if we have done we, there are lots of people we have lots of uh, good singers who are professional singers who only sing who only dance or who only act like that the younger generation also should be uh, given that opportunities for them to choose so where they send their students to learn where they send their children to learn is very important what they learn is also very important
And uh, Upeka, there was something fascinating you mentioned about uh, sort of forgetting your ethnicity, religion and all that when you dance and in arts. So in your, with your personal experiences, can you elaborate on that experience where maybe you travelled to India, you worked with Tamil artists and, you, uh, and how the others worked or learned from you. So if you can uh, share some of your experiences with respect to that. Yes, now uh, in the past three years I have been working with a dance village where they, uh, it's called Nithyagram, they dance Odyssey. Uh, Odyssey is a style of Indian dance uh, in India and uh, it's not as popular as Bharatanatyam but Odyssey is also a very beautiful technique and uh, my father visited uh, Nithyagram many years ago and when he saw them dance he thought that uh, we have some kind of similarity and that uh, he had invited uh, Odissi dancers to come to Sri Lanka and that they should learn our technique and our dancers should also learn their technique. So that uh, first meeting my parents both went there and little after that I went there and I performed a Kandyan dance for them and they really loved the Kandyan dance and uh, we started exchanging our techniques. So now they, they, come, they came to Sri Lanka last year and spent one and a half months, two students came, spent one and a half months, I taught them Kandyan dance and they taught my, our students Odyssey and we have done a production and we, we need to share because there are lots of things that I learnt from her because they are dancers who live in a village where it's a 10 acre uh, plot of land. It was started by Pratima Bedi, who was the Odissi dancer who started it. And uh, they live and dance. So they get up in the morning. F from 8.30 in the morning, they first they do their workout, they do yoga, they do Nati Shastra, they learn um, the history of their dance. Then they have rehearsals at 10.30, then they have a uh, lunch break. Then they work till night time and they do productions, they do rehearsals, the whole day they spend dancing and they have one day off of the week but the rest of the time they are performing uh, all over India but they follow the Guru Shishya uh, respect that they, um, they learn to respect their teachers, they serve their teachers that is still there in India. But is it there in our traditional dance as well? The yes, we do. We do have that. I always find that our st dance students from the university or any place, a lot of dance students, music students, I have seen that they, they also follow that, that whenever they see us, they come and worship us. And that is something that we teach in our dance. And uh, in, uh, in Sri Lanka, I think it's still uh, there in uh, because in most Asian countries we respect our teachers but in India it's uh, it's much more than even here. So do you think that is one reason that uh, sort of respect is one Res reason that uh, India has always been able to put uh, nation as number one, India as number one though they come from all sorts of so different exactly, states. Exactly yeah they come from different states but they're all Indians and they all learn a technique. They all either learn to sing. Every child learns classical singing or classical ca Indian dance. So or what you're saying is basically they influence culture yes, from the beginning. Beginning from because the all parents even now they always make sure that they, their children learn uh, 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 classical uh, singing or dancing. Uh, in their very early stages so that uh, at some point when they want to choose their 